Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Time here today, back with another Black Desert video. Look at that bow. Oh, I ruined that take by saying that. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the most recent patch that came to Black Desert on April 6th of 2022. This patch brings the new season server, Black Desert Free to Play Week, new character, the Draconia, tons of changes, tons of events, there's so much crap. I ain't gonna waste any more of your time. Just, you know, quickly, you know, if you haven't subscribed already, consider it. I got tons of content, would really appreciate it. Helps grow my channel. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into it. And let's start off with the events like we do with every single one of these videos. So there are so many events with this patch that I'm going to kind of like break it into three categories. We have the events that are just like generic events that kind of just would happen on any normal patch. Then we have the special events that go along with the season server. And then we have the special events that go along with the new character, right? So let's start off with the generic events that apply to everybody, regardless of what you're doing. And the first one is that Black Desert is free to play for the next week. And if you play the game in the next week as a new player who's never downloaded the game before or never bought the game before anyway, um, and you hit the start game button, you get a copy of the game for free. You can also go to the website and get a free uh, enhanced pack version of the game as well. So if you've got friends that have been wanting to try Black Desert, now is the time. They just have to download the game. I, you probably have to create an account here on the Black Desert main page here, and then you'll be able to uh, get the game for free. So now's the time to get your friends and tell them to watch Evil Do Us Harm, because, you know, um, I, yeah. The next generic event is the Jade Lit Dragon's Breath. So with this one, when you are out playing the game, basically killing mobs, gathering, fishing, you're going to get these Jade Lit Dragon's Breaths. These items can be exchanged to Celis and Velia for the event Tyrant, or you can exchange these things with that same NPC, Celis and Velia. And if you don't know who Celis is, he's the furniture vendor in Velia. So he's located up here in Velia and going to the city, and he is the furniture vendor Celis right here, right by the uh, main stable there. But you can exchange them with him for these items that you see on your screen. So Kaffir stones, gem fragments, shards, typical stuff that we like exchange for these events. So yeah, um, go out, kill stuff, get your tyrant thing, as well as these free things. Next up, we have a time to extract Kaffir stones event. If you've been playing the game before, we've had this event, I think twice before, if memory serves. But uh, basically, you can now get 100% of the Kaffir stones back when you extract, and it only costs one silver to extract. So if you plan to reroll to the Dracania, and you need to transfer over your Kaffir stones or something, um, now is the time to do it. Next up, we have the Source of Ions and the Mysterious Knights events. So we'll start with the Mysterious Knights, since most people are familiar with this one. This happens pretty much every time there's a new class. This guy's going to spawn. Don't get scared of him when you see the notification pop up on your screen while you're out grinding. Talk to him, and you get a skill EXP buff of 300% for three hours. Huge buff, awesome for power leveling these skill points on a new character, like your new Draconian character that you're going to be making. Now, the first thing here is the Source of Ions. So with this event, basically when you're out fighting stuff, you're going to get this Source of Ions item that'll pop in your inventory. It'll activate automatically. And you're going to get an AP buff of 10 for 10 minutes, pretty much, and damage reduction buff of 5. So uh, yeah, little bonus while you're out grinding. So great time to go out and grind here. And it's even more so because one of the later events is EXP boosts. The next event is a special loyalty shop event. So if you don't know what these things are, press the escape key on the keyboard, click on the Pearl Shop tab, you're going to see the Pearl inventory. If you go to the Loyalties tab, there are going to be special Dracania um, items that you can purchase here for loyalties, 100 loyalties each. These are all the different items that are available, some ones that stand out, at least in my mind. Rare course or training boxes are always nice if you're going for those Dream Horses. Also, everybody loves themselves some Cron Stones. And yeah, I'm not going to sit here and read all these to you. It's running through May 4th. New items will be added every single day through April 15th. And the final generic event that we would typically see with any other patch is a Twitch Drops event. This one is for the new class releasing, running through April 20th. If you link your Black Desert account to your Twitch account, which can be done in the login menu here, um, this page walks you through it. I'll link it down in the description below. Watch your favorite streamers, and I'm assuming I'll be included on this one. The last one was for partnered program only, but this one doesn't say that. So when you watch me this weekend playing through the new region, uh, you'll be able to get some free rewards. And there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Last one is at 17 cumulative hours over the next two weeks for a rare course or training box. So uh, yeah, get your free stuff from watching your favorite Twitch streamers. And that's it for generic events. Now let's move on to the new region. So quests and events and things that are associated with the new region. First of all, we do have the new region in the game. If you open up the map by pressing M on the keyboard, you will see the new region in the game chilling out right here. And this page brings you a ton of information about it. I'm going to be doing separate videos on pretty much everything in here. But basically to quickly highlight the different stuff here. So the new region is released. The new region has a similar debuff as the desert debuff where you have the drought sort of debuff that makes you thirsty. Now you have frostbite instead. The citron tea and the well-brewed misa teas are what disables that or removes that from your character. They are awards for doing the live streams every day. The recipes for these are also listed right here on the screen, so if you want to pause the video. Moving on a bit further, we have new trade items that have been added into the game. Thorn Timber Crates, Snowfield Timber Crate, Snowfield Obsidian Box, and Snowfield Jade Box. 
I'll need to do some math on these to see what they are financially and how they work out. There's new meals that come with the region as well as new crystals. So all of these crystals are right here. I believe it's broken down further on in the patch notes, so we'll get to that at that point. But new food and crystals available in the region. We have the new Labresca helmet, which was announced at the one of the Calfion balls, I think the first one. How this helmet was being released, it's your equivalent of the Fallen God armor except for the helmet. Then we have several new monster zones, so we've talked about these in previous videos. So yeah, nothing too crazy here. You should have been expecting this, but a couple of new grinding zones. And we also have the new storyline available to you. So when you made your season character, hopefully you picked the new storyline. When you complete new storyline stuff, you're going to get different quests that you can do for different rewards. So there's your quick, super quick overview of that. Once again, this is just an overview patch notes video, not going super in depth into all of this. I'll be sure to cover all this later on in videos throughout the week, as well as in my live streams this weekend. Now, coming along with the new region, we have some pretty dang cool events. The first one is a crossover event with Alienware, I guess. I don't know how these sorts of things work. But basically, what you're going to do is complete the Mountain of Eternal Winter main quest line, as well as complete your season pass before May 4th to be automatically entered in a chance to win a laptop. And then 20 other winners beyond the first grand prize winner will win an Eternal Winter outfit box. So that's pretty dank. That laptop's actually pretty sick. I looked at it before I made this video and kind of want one. The second part of this event is for content creators who make YouTube videos. Running from April 6th through May 4th, if you would like to create a video, put Eternal Winter in the title, put some description stuff with the hashtags right here, and then you need to put your family name in the video somewhere inside of it, and you'll be entered for a contest to win the same prizes pretty much. So the grand prize is the laptop, the second to fifths is an Eternal Winter's gift box, and then everybody who makes a video gets Dragon's Blessings times two. Now moving on from that, the next event revolving around the new region is going to be this tour event. So on April 9th, there will be a live stream that you can watch of going through the new region. And on April 8th uh, in NA or April 9th in EU, you can attend the tour and they'll show you around the region, I guess. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what's going on there. And that's it for events that are specifically themed around the new region. Moving on to the new season now. So we have the new season server. They have a little infographic that gives you information about all the stuff in the season server. There's also that Evil Do Us Harm guide that has video guides and everything, but if you're looking for textual guides, they have these here on their website as well. Once again, this stuff is all in the description below. Now moving on to season-specific events, just like every season, we have a level up event series. So for levels 30, 40, 50, 56, 7, 8, 9, 60, and 61, there are a ton of different rewards. These are the same sort of rewards that you see typically in these, including your Pentuvula ring and earring that you obtained from these for like every season in the history of ever. Moving on again, we have the Season Dracania Pass, so this is the new Seasons Pass this time around. The currencies are these guys right here, Prismatic Scales. Like I always do, I'll put out a video about what the best thing to buy with those are. Otherwise, it looks pretty similar to the types of stuff we have come to love from these types of Season Passes. The quests to complete the Season Pass seem pretty similar as to previous seasons. Do note that for one of the earlier events, you do need to complete the Season Pass to be entered for the laptop giveaway thing, right? So, if you are going to be going for it, make sure to focus on completing these quests. So those are the events specifically centered around the new season server. We now have the new character release, so the Dracania. We've talked about this since last week. It's got a little overview of some skills, a little video. You're probably already playing it because my video comes out the day after the patch notes. But yeah, so the Dracania released, and with the release of the Dracania, we have Dracania progression rewards as well. So the previous set of stuff that I showed you was for leveling up a season character. Now for leveling up the Dracania class specifically, you're going to get a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, same types of rewards we're used to seeing with these season characters. So for making a season character that's also Dracania, you can double dip on these rewards. Also note that if you don't like the season character in the Dracania, you can use a timepiece and swap it to something that you do like after you've completed these challenges. Just uh, keep that in mind. I know you people like to min-max. And the final event is an EXP boosting event. Hinted at this one earlier, but on weekdays, it's 150% combat EXP and 50% skill EXP. And on weekends, it's 250% combat XP and 50% skill XP. And that's it for events. The last post that they had is a summary of all of these events because there are so many different things going on. I know I talk quickly. So yeah, that's all of the different events. Now, let's get into the patch notes. So these patch notes do bring a lot of information as well. Once again, talking about the new class, it does confirm that 100% of the main weapon AP will be applied to succession. So a lot of people always are confused when a new class comes out without the awakening weapon and how that 70-30 split thing works, so 100% is applied with the main weapon AP. Also, if you make a non-seasonal one of these classes, you can use Marnie's Pocket Watch, which gives you a 3% crit hit damage bonus in place of the Awakening weapon until Awakening comes out. I don't know, um, seems a little over the top to me, but hey, uh, there you go, that's for you. Next up, we have a refresher that the Mountaintop of Eternal Winter has been released, and blah 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 blah. You can pick the quest line at the start, which you probably already saw when you pre-created your class. 
There's a couple of ways to get to this quest line if you haven't played it before. So if you're already playing on a character, you can talk to your Black Spirit. And after you've completed the Adorax and Sakrykia main quest line, you can accept the quest line there and run through it. Otherwise, if you're a new character, you just pick it right off the bat. After playing through this quest line, there's some rewards that you can pick up. We already talked about these earlier on. We already talked about the weather. We already talked about the monster zones and how there's new places to grind. This breaks down the locations in a little bit more detail, though, and gives you the recommended APs and DPs for them. Once again, this is linked in the description below if you're concerned about the new grinding zones. Next up, we have Labreska's Helmet, and we already mentioned this as well. We also talked about this at the Calfion Ball Part 1. It's your next Fallen God Armor piece. We then go into a stat breakdown on the gems and food like we were talking about a little while ago. So it looks like we have a PvP center gem, providing you various PvP resistances on both of the items as well as an accuracy buff. We then have the foods, so we already talked about the two different teas that cure frostbite. Beyond this, we have a processing EXP exclusive little food, which is pretty, pretty sick. Weight limit plus 300, kind of neat. Lasts for 600 minutes. We also have ones for strength and breath, so while you're training those different items, you can get a little bonus EXP out of it. We have a fishing exclusive one that lasts for 600 minutes, so for AFK overnight fishing. And we have some other buffs in there as well, but uh, nothing like that stands out compared to stuff that we already had in the game. At least in my opinion. We talked about the crates. These are the prices on the different crates that are available. There's a new outfit for Shy, if you want to go ahead and craft this outfit for Shy. New mobs to hunt if you're into hunting, so several different things to get up here. You can also make the heads and mounted items of them so that you can place them in your house. Tons of new contribution EXP quests that are available in the region. There's also some new consecutive quests, and I haven't played through the new region, so I don't know what these involve yet, so don't hold me to it, but consecutive quests are usually the type that you use for leveling, so might make some changes to the leveling guide. We'll see how they play out. New guild combat missions based around the new region. New knowledge is based around the new items that you can gather. Black Star sub weapons have been added into the game. Not gonna lie, looks kind of pretty sick here on the Nova. As you know, the new season character has been released, new season server, we already mentioned all that stuff. Couple tweaks to characters that are already in the game. Gear tagging prices have been reduced by 50%. The UI now shows you how many different items you have when you're going to buy something, so if you already have stuff in your warehouse, it'll let you know, so you pick the right stuff. Already talked about selecting the starting zone that you wanna play in. And that, is pretty much everything that is important from this patch. So this recording is 25 minutes long. Hopefully I can make it a lot shorter than that in editing. But um, yeah, tons of stuff in this patch. Biggest thing is that you got your season character, new season servers, new class release. You got the new region to play in and run around. There's a ton of stuff to do. Like I've been saying throughout this video, I will be live streaming the new region, playing through on my season character uh, this weekend. So I'll be going through all of that over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash evildoisarm. So be sure to check me out there. And yeah, guys, a lot of stuff to take advantage of. If this video is going to help you, do let me know in the comment section below. Also, once again, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I got a ton of content. Helps to grow my channel. Would greatly appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching once again. Look forward to seeing you in the next live stream, YouTube video, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.